What is going on guys? My name is Hussain and in this video I want to discuss what makes a good software tester. So guys in, organi in many organizations there are usually explicit roles for every uh, software project. So you might have uh, a software engineer role or a software developer role and sometimes the software engineer does write actually code and sometimes they overlap but most of the time the software engineer actually does also testing and I'm gonna talk about what makes you a good software tester right so you might not write actually code but you're testing other people's product and this is a very very critical job and people get paid so well if you're if you're really a goddamn good tester right and your job will be to get paid to find bugs and not just any bugs stinking nasty bugs right that the developers didn't even think about and that requires really extreme cognitive ability for you to understand the system you're testing okay you're not just testing an application you're testing a whole system and based on this it will makes you excel as the job and you can really get recognized really quickly like, oh this guy is good right and i wanted to tell you about this how do you become a good software tester so if you're testing an application and most of the time now we have mobile applications right but not necessarily you can have web applications and you can have you can have desktop applications right on, on mac os or windows and each one requires certain skills but all of them kind of boils down to the skills of troubleshooting and i will go beyond and say it's almost like a talent you're born with this idea of troubleshooting right finding the source of a problem and and i gotta give it to my dad actually because he has this talent and i think i kind of inherited some of this talent from him All right it's not it is a skill but it could also be a talent that means you're just inherit you, you just out of the box you're good at testing and troubleshooting and and my, my uh, and my dad uh mashallah and i'm knocking on wood i don't have wood here but <laughs> he's just he, he he used to be a mechanic and and people in, in our neighborhood would come to him and I would give him essentially it's like they, they bring their cars and he will he will he will be in the house and whoever driving out will just he will immediately identify the problem from the sound the car makes and that was like really he was really well known uh, in the neighborhood by just this ability of troubleshooting from the sound it's like okay this car doesn't uh, the Fiat whatever to 1994 is not making the right sound. He just knows from the sound, right? And it comes back to your your talent and obviously skill that you can acquire with more and more practice. And so yeah, so troubleshooting is a skill and could be also a talent that you can. It's not a problem. You can also acquire that. So back to our topic, which is software testing. Software testing is it's in itself. You can pick an application, mobile application, and you can just sit down and try to find bugs, right? But if you don't understand what the software does, you'll be essentially in the blind, right? What, what, what are you testing? If I click this button and turn red, is that supposed to turn red? I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's a feature. You don't know, right? That's why first thing you have to understand is that you need to really understand how the system works. It will really benefit if you actually design the whole system and you're testing it. That's the perfect scenario. I, that's actually at my job. I do this. I design the system and I then turn it on and test it. Or if I not design it, I read the spec and then compare it, right? So it's like, what is supposed to do? And then I just thoroughly just sit down and work with the application. And here's the thing, when you find what could be a bug, you have two options. And you can 
basically, you will know yourself, right? Some software testers finds a bug and turn down to GitHub or turn out to the issue repository, whatever repository system you have, and they create a bug. Oh, I clicked on this and it takes a long time. It's a, it's a slow button. I clicked on submit and it's not coming back, right? Or it took, I don't know, 30 seconds and they, they just... They just stop the issue and that's it. They just close the issue. They give you a broadcast and that's it. Some people do, do that. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. That's your job. That's a minimum thing you can do. There are other people. What they do is, well, I clicked this button and took 20 seconds. Well, what does this button do? Well, it sends a Git request to, to some sort of a server. Well, I'm gonna take a little bit of an extra step here. Let's see what we get. What can I do? Well, it's a mobile application, so I can't really sniff that request. So I need to know: does the does the application really just spins up in the user experience and not ever sending that request, or does the request actually got sent to the server and the server is spinning that request? Right. So you have to know. So how do you know? Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put a proxy and then connect my mobile application to the proxy and, and click that button again and say, oh, oh, I can see the request actually very quickly making it to the, to the debugging proxy. It could be Fiddler or Charlie. And then you can check that and say, oh, okay, that request actually left the application very quickly. So it's not the application, it's just the server. So that's one hint you can give to the developer to simplify their life. Right. If that request took a long time to actually make it to the proxy, then the problem is a user experience. So maybe your your application, your, your click or touch is not registering. So it takes a long time to register. So that's a bug in the user experience. Right. So you have to as much as possible just strip down the design. Right. And then you can go further. You can stop there. Says, oh, oh, the server is taking, uh, I don't know, 20 seconds to execute this request. Well, can you stop there? You can. People do. But if you want to be a better software tester, what you do is, say, okay, now I know that's not a problem that you as are experience. Let me go and go to the rest endpoint and actually see what's happening there and now it depends on your architecture what database you use and what all that other stuff is it what is what is this request doing right and you can you have very few things to work with at this stage as a software tester you you're not allowed to debug guys you're only allowed to use the software right so what you can do is well you have you own the server right so you can look at the server and you can analyze the cpu there right you can take a look at the request to the database if there is a request to the database right compare the timing from the request to the time the request was sent from the proxy to the time it was received to the server to the time it was it hit the database as a as a as a query to the database and you can compare the time okay it took it, i sent the request at t0 the server it arrives at the server at T0, but the it arrived at the database at T19, and the database took like a fraction of milliseconds and respond back. What is it doing? 19 seconds is doing at the server. So now, you know it's not the database. It's the server that's doing pre-processing or maybe post-processing, right? Depends on the idea. Or no, you might say, okay, well... Uh, I, uh, the request arrived at the server T0 and immediately left the server to the database at T0, same time, right? But the database took 20 seconds to execute that request. And now you say, oh, why the database? And now, now it could be easier for you because you know, right? Database, you can analyze it and see, okay, tune the database. Okay, why does it take 20 seconds to execute a query? You go and say, oh, that's a full table scan. This table has like a 5 million records and we don't have an index on this. Or maybe you're doing something like a name like a percentage and obviously the index is skipped in this case. So you can, you can just have unlimited ways to test the software to identify exactly where the problem and this shows 
in your job. And this obviously elevates you as, a, as an engineer, as a backend engineer specifically in this case, right? It's just like if you know more, you can be better. And if you be better, then it will show at your job, it will show and you will get promoted, you will get, you will get really recognized as a good tester, right? And people will give you hard problems and people will give you jobs and people will offer you money because like, I, I need this guy. This guy is a good tester. Developers will pick you only because, hey, oh, this guy's know how to test. And I like to work with this guy. I, I'll, I like to work with Mark or Tiffany because Tiffany uh, gives me a good repro cases and gives me exactly what is the problem so I don't have to spend my time hitting the wall and debugging because debugging is hard, right? All right, guys, that's it for me today. Uh, that was a quick video just talking about the importance of software testing and how to become actually a good software testers. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, share this video with your friends, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Keep coding, keep working, keep writing more software. Stay awesome.